Hey, come here. Come here. Just a little. Yeah, you're denoising your scenes wrong. Now I see you through the screen. You're leaning back in your chair. Oh, how could I possibly have been denoising my scenes wrong? I plugged my denoising note in. I thought everything was good. No, you're doing it wrong. And today I'm going to tell you how to do it right. Because you don't want to be that guy that denoises his scenes wrong. And then everybody laughs at him. So without further ado, this is how you... Actually, I lied with uh, further ado. I wanted to thank you for 17 million subscribers. Myself and Moose are working really, really hard to put out videos for you guys. And um, yeah, we're just super excited at where the channel is going. Because 17,000 people is more than the Vatican City. That means the Pope could be watching this video right now. Probably not. But personally, I wanted to thank you so much for the 17,000 subscribers and as we're monetized now on YouTube we are only a couple dollars away from our first big cash out of $100 from the blender dojo so thank you so much everyone for helping fund this channel and uh, my gas money so I can get back and forth to my normal job and I wanted to thank you so much for that now truly without further ado this time you're doing your denoising wrong I'll tell you how to do it right across this video I did a comparison of four different denoisers and no denoising at all just to see which one is better best in terms of time, sample counts, and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. This was a very scientific experiment conducted by myself. Let's jump right into it. And I'm wearing the beanie today because the hair is garbage. Anyway, so let's open up all of our denoising here. We're going to start off with no denoiser just to show you guys what no denoising looks like really. So if we hop into no denoiser here, Boom, look at that cool transition with OBS. We have 20 samples and this is really what a scene would look like at 20 samples, guys. This is this is really it. So you're gonna notice with no denoising here, as we go up in samples, there indeed is less noise. However, the noise is still there no matter how many samples you throw on it. And that's just down to how Blender calculates light. Let's get into it here. We have a bunch of grain all around our scene. You'll notice that in the dark areas, there seems to be a little less grain. However, there still is. And there there's noise on top of all these light parts to noise on our character, noise in the back, noise everywhere. Only because it's 20 samples, meaning Blender calculated where the light was bouncing about 20 times for each tile. If we go into 200 samples here, you can immediately notice, look at this, I'm going to flip back and forth, that there is much, much less noise here in our scene. Uh, but the noise is still visible. You can see the noise on the hood here in the background, especially in blurry areas that the, the focus wasn't on because our focus is on our character here. If we look in the background, there is no more focus on the back. So that leaves the only thing to take over instead of the detail of the background that is now blurred out so we can much more clearly see our noise here. If we look in our shadows, there's significantly less grain. However, there still is grain there. Not that anybody would be looking there. And on our plants too, uh, complex st uh, structures rather, you can see that grain simply because of the focus once again. Keep in mind, I have a GTX 1060, which is the most common GPU used on Steam. So I would imagine that most of you are using a GTX 1060 too. This render was kind of long, not gonna lie. It took about 20 minutes, I would imagine. I completely forgot to record the times for each render. However, I know this took significantly longer than my 200 samples. That's something to keep Keep in mind if you want to render with high sample counts, especially for animations and complex scenes with lots of particles here. But if we take a look, there is still grain. There's grain all around our scene here, except in our shadows. It did a really, really, really good job with the shadows, and I'm super impressed. However, like we said before, in the background, parts that are blurry where there's no real detail because the focus is not on the background, the focus of the camera, the audience's focus can still be on there. That's where the grain pops up. And if your audience is focusing on the foreground as well as the background too, like I I have in this scene, that's not where you want your grain and where you want your noise to be. The solution is a denoiser. The denoiser does two things. Number one, it obviously removes the noise from your scene. And number two, it allows you to complete your renders faster with the same quality because you can render something with 200 samples and no noise at the same rate that it would take for you to render something with 1000 samples with a lot of noise. So it cuts down on your render time and it removes the noise, which is a win-win, win for everyone really. And the computer doesn't have to do any more processing. So win for your computer, win for your hardware. Let's go into the NLM denoising because that is the initial default denoiser that Blender throws at you. If you're a beginner and you just click on the tab here, if we hop in, we see a bunch of artifacts. Now, if you don't know what artifacts are, they're kind of weird things that are going on with your image that weren't in the original render. And if you rendered it properly, wouldn't be there anymore. A quick example of some artifacts might be something like fireflies. Now, if you look at the scene, I have white dots all around the scene. These are not fireflies. These were very intentionally put in there just to add some detail to our scene and add some spice to it. However, fireflies are individual white pixels that uh, Blender messes up rendering and it appears 
appears a lot brighter in the scene than everything else, giving them the name Fireflies because they look super bright and they're just kind of very distracting. Now instead, once again, if we look at our scene, it almost looks like somebody took their thumb and then shoved their thumb into the scene, putting a bunch of thumbprints on our buildings, on our character here. If you take a look, there's some right here, some right here, and it makes it so bad that you can't really read these words anymore. You know, I, I can tell this is a 20, but I can't really tell what anything else says. This is much more apparent kind of in the background here. Got these very thumb stamp looking like artifacts in our scene. Now this is okay because this is 20 samples. However, if we move up to 200 samples, you can kind of see the same thing around this ladder. Looks very strange, especially things that are out of focus here. You know, some more artifacts around these plants. And artifacts aren't necessarily good because they're not something you planned to be in your scene. They're not something you plan to have. Right over here, look at this. Along the edge of this leaf, it looks like it's shaking, you know, vibrating in a way. And you definitely don't want that in your scene. If we move over to the final one, NLM denoising with two, sorry, 1,000 samples, we still have these artifacts here. Although this would take the noise out of your scene and would make it less apparent, it does add these artifacts. So with NLM, you have artifacts and then you have noise you kind of swap them in the sense that you remove the noise and then you add in some artifacts because it's trying to get rid of the noise. So with NLM, you trade noise for artifacts in your scene. And that can be good for some of you if you like having artifacts in your scene. However, there is a better solution with open image denoising. Open image denoising is another option all the way at the bottom of your denoising options, which allows your scene to instead trade noise for blurriness. Now let's take a look at what I'm saying here. This was rendered with 20 samples and open image denoising. This um immediately, I'd say even looks a lot better than our 1000 samples with the NLM denoising. If we take a look around, there are no artifacts. However, this scene is not as sharp as it was originally meant to be. We can still read these words. Everything kind of looks blurry here. And let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. If we move up just by a little, you get a lot more sharpness because initially with our 200 samples, we have a lot less noise because Blender already removed some of the noise. And then when the open image denoising goes over it, there's less to do and it can make the scene sharper. It's like trying to peel one of those little stickers off of a plastic toy you got or off of a uh, off of a plastic packaging, right? You're trying to peel the sticker off. And then the more sticker there is, often the harder it is to get off because there's more you got to get off. However, if the sticker is really small, then you can just rip it right off. With the big sticker, sometimes it'll rip in half and then some will get stuck to there and you still have to keep working at it. Imagine the bigger sticker, like the 200 samples here in the open image denoising. There was a lot that the open image denoising had to solve in terms of noise. There's a lot of noise in the scene. So the open image denoising had to work really hard and messed up a lot and made the scene blurry because there was a lot of noise it had to work with. As opposed to like a smaller sticker on a plastic package here, there wasn't a lot for the open image denoising to really solve. All of the noise was really gone already because we're at 200 samples, so all the open image denoiser had to do was kind of go over it, fix some things here and there, and then we get a better scene. So as we look around, you can see that some of that sharpness is added back into our scene. Instead of everything being blurry and kind of floaty, now the image is a lot sharper. We see that also when we go to 1000 samples here. And something I would like to add, if you take a look at the bottom here, is it kind of removes some of our shadows, which I find really interesting. And here's my hypothesis. Initially, the shadow had a bunch of noise in them and because the noise was there the open image denoising tried to find a neutral between the actual texture and the light of the texture and then the dark of the noise therefore making it kind of like a shadow like this however when we had 1000 samples once again the open image denoising doesn't have a lot to do because the scene already looks good by itself it simply went over some areas fixed it up leaving us with a nice clean texture here as opposed to something that looked kind of scuffed like here before changing back and forth not really much except for a big texture change here, which makes the scene look better in my opinion. Open image denoising over the NLM denoiser. Let's see what the denoising node has in store for us. Personally, my favorite is the denoising node simply because I can change everything after the effect. And if I do any compositing, I always know the denoising node is there and I can always throw it on before or after I render. The denoising node is very interesting in the sense that you have to use it properly. And this is what I was saying about you using your denoising wrong. Lots of 
people just go into Blender. You know, if they render a scene in Cycles, they'll change their scene over to Cycles. Go in the Cube, Shading, I lied, Compositing. We'll go over here to Use Nodes. They type in Denoise, they throw it in there. Whoops, I missed it. They throw it in there. They hit F12, they let their scene render, and boom, they think they're done. This is okay for very simple scenes like this cube. If you don't use the denoising node properly, you're creating a disconnect between Blender and what you're actually trying to render. This is the same as taking your render, exporting it to After Effects or Photoshop, and then trying to use their built-in Adobe denoising from there. There's a disconnect between the scene and what's actually going on, because Blender Blender is almost like a brain. It knows what's going on, it knows where textures are, it knows how far away things are, so why not take an advantage of that? What I mean by this is supplying Blender with the view layer properties. If we go over here to view layer properties and throw in the denoising data, then we can go back to compositing and these two normal and albedo inputs that you had no idea what they were for, you can then connect them up with the denoising normal and denoising albedo creating a scene that Blender can finally understand. Instead of taking its best guess, Blender can now see everything that's going on in your scene, understand some textures that kind of look like noise aren't actually noise and they're meant to be the texture, and then it can kind of work around it and using Intel's AI, it works best with this. So if you use your initial image, your denoising normal and your denoising albedo, plug them all into the denoise node here and then send it through the composite, that's the best way in the intended use of the denoising node here. Let's go back to our comparisons. With 20 samples, I'd say this is better than both the NLM and the Optics Image Denoising 1000 samples render here. As we can see, straight off the bat, even with 20 samples, we have a nice clean texture in the back. It isn't too blurry. It isn't, you know, it's out of focus like it's supposed to be, but it keeps that sharpness to it that I initially intended to be in the image here. Six has some light bouncing off her arm. Everything is working properly, and it only gets better if we move up to the 200 samples and then the 1000 samples. Because like I said before, with the open image denoising and the NLM denoiser, if you give Blender an already good scene that's low on noise, the denoiser doesn't have to do much work, so it has less chances to mess up. Same thing with this. As I flip back between 20 and 200, you can see that we even gained some detail here. So I wouldn't recommend rendering with 20 samples, but 200 samples? That's a fair amount, especially if you're rendering with a 1060 GTX card like I have and like many of you have at home too. I know there might be somebody out here watching this and his name is Blue Pixel Animations. The man somehow was able to obtain an RTX 3090 and a 3080 within a short time period. So for him, 200 samples could be done in half a second. However, if you're like the rest of us and have to render on a GPU that's six, seven, eight years old, then this is the best way that you can render your scene. 200 samples, which is fairly good, gives Blender a decent amount of noise, but not a lot. So the denoiser doesn't have to do a lot. And then when the denoiser does work, it doesn't matter up as often because there isn't as much noise in the scene as if you were to render with 20 samples. When we go up to a thousand samples, we barely see a change, and I'm flipping back and forth here in case you couldn't tell, between the 200 samples and then the 1000. All we see is just a very slight increase in detail. So in my opinion, rendering with 200 samples and saving 10 to 15 minutes is way better than rendering with 1000 samples and getting that little bit of detail out of your scene. So like I said at the start of the video, you have been rendering wrong and uh, I'm happy that I could save you today because I just found this out myself. The reason why I started this YouTube channel and heard CG Matters say this as well, which I find funny, is because I wanted to provide videos for people that had the same problems I did and I didn't know how to solve them because every place they looked on the internet, they couldn't find a solution. So the reason why your denoising is bad and you can upgrade your denoising is by throwing in both the denoising normal and the denoising albedo with your noisy image here, with your initial image rather. So once again, we wanted to thank you so much for 17. Once again, we want to thank you for 1,700 subscribers. I might have said 17,000 at the start of this video. I hope I didn't. <laughs> I was ill over last week. It's not what you think, but I was ill with some other sickness. I took some time to focus on myself, get some renders done, and now I am feeling a lot better and ready to jump back into it. So uh, thank you once again so much for watching. And I want to include something at the end of every video. For example, in this video, as you can see, let me switch it over to uh, the scene two. There's a five, five o'clock in the background. That's 5 a.m. <laughs> 
I'm currently destroying my sleep schedule. Actually, I'm not because I would have been up anyway. But it's currently 5 a.m. and I'm up here making this video. I was sitting down on my couch and I was flipping through Instagram, Twitter, whatever it is, and not really getting anything productive done with my time. As I get older and older, I start to realize how important making good use of your time is and I want to make the most of it especially because I just turned 20. Most of the time I lack the motivation to stand up sit in this chair and make a video. I really enjoy making the process however every time I'm I'm not motivated to do it. I'm excited to do it however I don't, ha I don't physically have the motivation to stand up, put something nice on, sit down, and then make a video. This is a normal human thing and everyone goes through it, so if you're suffering through the same thing, know that you aren't alone. Everyone has to deal with it whether they show it to you or not. The best thing you can do if you have this problem, this issue, it's not even an issue because it happens to everyone, but the best thing you can do if this is happening to you is to just get up and do it. That's why Nike's slogan is so successful, just do it. It's because that's what you need to do. There are millions of people out there every day, professional athletes. I personally follow MMA and the UFC, so tons of UFC athletes, tons of MMA people, track runners, Olympians, whatever it is. Sometimes they just want to take a day off, they don't want to get up. However, what you have to do if you want to progress and get better and better and do what you want to do in life is just start going at it and start working at it. I know sometimes it's really hard to find that motivation, but once you jump into it and once you start doing it, you'll find that it's a lot easier than you thought it was. So thank you so much for 1,700 subscribers. You guys are the best people in the world and uh, I'm happy that I could fix your uh, denoising problems. And if you stuck around to the end of the video, once again, thank you so much. I have been a member of the Blender Dojo. Keep training everyone and uh, I hope you have a good day. Ah! I started streaming instead of stop recording.